Have you ever trusted the officers men behind the changing rails? The Sentinels of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Let's go. Get behind the rail! The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is one of the most continuously guarded monuments in the world. It's patrolled 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, regardless of the weather, by an elite regiment of soldiers known now, for those of you who've never been to Arlington and seen these Sentinels in action, it's a sight because you have to think, especially if you're in the military, how much goes into that 24 hours a day, dressed perfect, have to have your bearing at all times, no matter how much the assholes are that come up to you. Sentinels. So what makes the old guard of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier so feared and respected? And what happens when people push the boundaries and try to mess with one of the guards? They represent the very best of the best the army can offer. It's so elite that less than 20% of all volunteers are accepted for training. And of those... I would guess a lot of people go into this and they think it's going to be kind of a sexy position, right? Almost like embassy guards in the Marine Corps. Then they realize all the drill, the attention to detail, the uniform inspections, the hot days, not scratching, all the pain in the ass that goes into a job like this. Now, you well-respected job, not many tomb guards. A fraction passed training to become fully fledged tomb guards. In fact, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier Guard Identification Badge is the third least awarded badge in the entire United States Army behind military horseman ID badges and astronaut badges. To become a <laughs> who's ever seen somebody, let me know in the comments, with a horseman badge or an astronaut badge or a Tomb of the Unknown Soldier badge? I don't think I have, and I don't think. I would want this job. I don't think I'd volunteer for it. Now it looks, I'm sure in the recruiting end, you're like, wow, this is a pretty good job. You know, I'm in DC, look pretty cool with my aviators on like this fella. But the amount of hassle it must be to do it and the amount of a-holes you deal with, you know, the protesters, the jackasses, you're always being filmed, right? All you can do is make a mistake in this job, but it's a very commendable position for somebody wanted to do that's for damn sure tomb guard an old guard soldier must volunteer by applying for appointment to the tomb through the sergeant of the guard to be appointed the soldier is assigned to the tomb for an initial two-week training period upon reporting to a relief the trainee is assigned a tomb guard trainer the trainer informs the trainee of what is expected of them including following strict rules training guidelines and the need for complete dedication and commitment to the tomb the training cycle is intense consisting of a series of five exhaustive tests over six to twelve months if the trainee fails any test they are assigned back to their company the success so it'd be like boot camp inspection times 10 you know you got to look squared away and i'm sure the people in charge of this take it seriously which they should it's just when you look at these guys you know they're not wearing any chevrons to indicate insignia because you don't want to outrank the person the unknown soldier in the tomb it's very ceremonial as you think about it. The trainee is awarded the Tomb Guard Identification Badge and will be from then on referred to as a Tomb Guard or Badge Holder by their fellow Sentinels. Demonstrating how serious a role this is considered to be, the Tomb Guard Identification Badge is the only military badge that can be revoked for any action that brings disrespect to the tomb. Now, should they revoke the badge? So let's say you did your time, Three years later, you're at Fort Bragg and you get a DUI. Unbecoming of the tomb guard, they revoke it. It's nice to have a prestigious position left in the military, something that people look up to at least before you get into it. I don't know any tomb guards. If you guys that know one or met one, let me know how they like the job. The Unknown Soldier. On the 11th of November 1921, the remains of an unknown American soldier were returned from the battlefields of France. Unidentified remains weren't uncommon during World War I. No. For this reason, the U.S. government approved the construction of a memorial in the Arlington National Cemetery. States. This would be... Well, think about that for a minute. So back in this period, 1921, up until DNA testing was actually viable... If they got remains back, they may be the remains of the a soldier that your family may not. Some stories about Vietnam where they brought back someone's loved one. Later on, they test the DNA. It's a Vietnamese soldier. 
So what we've got today in the context of warfare is relatively new. We can identify who the remains are. So now you've got situations up until Vietnam where you didn't know who the person was. Think about that. Maybe it's your loved one in the grave. Hopefully don't DNA test it because why would you? They're gone. The final resting place of the returned unknown soldier and would serve as a monument to all deceased military personnel who were either lost or the remains never identified. The remains of the unknown soldier were interred beneath a three-level white marble tomb covered in a stone slab. At the rear of the sarcophagus includes an inscription which reads, Here rests in honored glory an American soldier known but to God. Why you shouldn't mess with a tomb guard. It is pretty impressive when you see it. So the walkway they've got, a little carpet, a rubber mat. He's got these tracks in it, like cattle tracks in a pasture. Because they're doing it nonstop. I was there one time in the summer for a funeral. Walked over to see this. Hot as hell. Muggy. They're wearing the gear. Looks squared away. Not cracking a hint of a smile or a discomfort. They do have a pretty quick turnover. I think at some points it's a half an hour turnover, depending on the weather. Realizing that in order to maintain this bearing, you know, you can't be miserable if you're rotating through a 24 hour cycle. While the role of the Sentinel is mostly ceremonial, there are some things you just don't do when visiting the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. The old guards will appear strong and silent, that is, until you break one of their rules. Cross over the barrier into the plaza and you'll probably hear this. It is requested that all visitors remain behind the chains and rails at all times. Now you wonder what the hell's wrong with people. It's pretty clearly delineated where you can go and where you can't go. You know, people got to get that Instagram shot. And I can't imagine what it was like during protest periods, even up until now with BLM, etc. If these guys have to deal with a lot of shit, they just take the job. I would say the average age, probably 21. They feel like it's an honorable thing to do, which it, it very well is. But dealing with the assholes would drive me insane. How would you guys feel about that? You're out there doing your job, whether in the UK, the US, doing some ceremonial position. People are coming up trying to get their Instagram photo right, and they end up being just total jackasses. Remain behind the chains of rail! Behind the chains and rail! Respect and silence is required at all times. If you're being loud, rude, and obnoxious, you'll likely get this response. Remain standing for this ceremony. Now they gotta be babysitters for people that, that weren't raised right. That's the part of these kind of jobs that'd be annoying. So they got this rifle. Looks like an M1. No rounds in it. It's a bayonet. I mean, they're not gonna use it for anything. Now again, ceremonial. They're going to yell at somebody, but what's the ultimate recourse? You're like the babysitter of the tomb. It shouldn't be you need a guard. I mean, it's a nice thought, but you know the way the world is with people protesting everything under the sun. It's what we got. It is requested that everyone maintains a level of silence and respect. It is requested that everyone maintain an atmosphere of silence. And respect at all times. Day in the life of a tomb guard. The old guard is made up of three tomb squads or reliefs, numbered first through to third. Unlike traditional army units, tomb reliefs are organized based on height, so that the tomb guards are similar in size during the changing of the guard. The well, I would say any army parade formation and dress uniforms is always organized by height. You're not going to put the short guy, tall guy, you know, you got the tall guys up front. Kind of goes towards the back. It does make sense that you organize them by height just because it looks more uniform, you know, the military stuff. Three reliefs are on duty utilizing 24 hour rotating shifts. A tomb guard's day begins at 5 a.m. with arrival at the tomb quarters one for duty. The tomb guards will inspect the quarters, prepare their uniforms, review orders, and receive their duty assignments for the coming day. At 6.30 a.m., the tomb guards inspect the trainee's readiness and uniforms. If a trainee meets relevant standards, the tomb guard may allow them to walk the first morning guard change known as BOLO at now, this would not be a job for a seasoned veteran, right? So you got 
the military, a couple of tours overseas. They say, hey, you want to be a tomb guard. You almost have to have young folks that are in the beginning of their career because you can't change body type much during this period. Those uniforms are expensive. There's only so much room to tailor them. You think about that part of it, the uniforms. If you ever put these kind of uniforms on or a well-fitting suit, it's not comfortable. It looks good, but it's not something you want to wear when it's 90 degrees in D.C. 7 a.m. The evening bolo will be the final change and walk of the day. During the hours of the day, the Arlington National Cemetery is open to visitors. The tomb guards will perform several changing of the guard and wreath laying ceremonies and walking the mat. During summer hours, the changing of the guard ceremony takes place every half hour, and during winter hours, every hour. Although all walks are important, the most coveted walk. Think about in the winter, too, with those shoes on, so they got dress shoes. And I don't know how they do it. Hopefully they got a tactic. Those dress shoes are thin. Dress socks are incredibly thin. So maybe you have winter dress shoes. Something to keep your feet warm. Because you know you got to be cold out there. When it's snowing, fine. But when your feet get cold, an hour of that, you go, why did I pick this job in the Army? You know, they're, they're infantry guys to start with. They volunteer for this position. They got to get them young because I can't imagine wanting to do this after even a couple years in the military. Just thinking about the uniforms, the inspections, how uncomfortable it is to do it. You're not yucking it up with your boys during some downtime here. A tomb guard is the midday noon moon walk. During the same time, the trainees perform mirror time, conduct uniform preparation, study knowledge, check in wreaths, and alert the tomb guards of the next changing of the guard. Ten minutes. Ten, Ten minutes. minutes. While guarding the tomb, sentinels do not display rank insignia. This is done so as not to outrank the unknown soldier, whatever their rank may have been. The tomb is guarded 24 hours a day and 365 days a year. So after the evening bolo, no ceremonial change and walks in battle dress uniforms are performed until the next morning's bolo. Now think about that, 24-7, Christmas Eve. Picture this, go with me here. You're a 21-year-old E4 in the Army, Christmas Eve. You hear the bells, the caroling off in the distance. You're guarding the tomb, stand and watch, being the sentinel, the lost soldier. I think that'd be fun, like one time. It's a memory, right? Something you can always talk about to your kids, but it doesn't sound like a fun job. Guarding the tomb. In March 1926, the U.S. decided to post a permanent guard over the tomb of the unknown soldier. Soldiers from the nearby Fort Myers, members of the 3rd Cavalry Regiment, nicknamed the Brave Rifles, were first assigned to guard the tomb. At first, they were enlisted only during daylight hours and served just to discourage visitors to climb on or disrespect the monument. By 1937, guarding the tomb became a round-the-clock job, and on April 6, 1948, the 3rd U.S. Infantry regiment known as the Old Guard was designated as the Army's official ceremonial unit, tasked with guarding the tomb of the unknown soldier. Old hey, do you guys think you need 24-hour guards at the tomb? It's ceremonial, right? Just for looks. You wonder if you didn't have the guard, would the thing be totally defaced and disrespected? I think the answer is probably yes. Question, if you guys or in the military, young guy. Would you want this job? Because it does come with some probably good memories of being in D.C., the people you see. But I don't think I want it long term. Thanks for watching.